so I was just doing some reading up on the Ender, um, and I keep running across people saying the same thing, so, um, it's funny, these guys on YouTube will get, um, <clears throat> these printers provided to them by whoever, and they review it and show it just doing all these amazing things, like Aurora Tech for one. Is that girl even 18 years old? <laughs> like, I feel weird watching a YouTube channel where somebody looks like a minor. <laughs> Anyway, um, I uh, was uh, reading about that, that I saw these people were saying um, the uh, printer uh, is this far off, blah, blah, blah. It was working great, um, and um, they were saying that um, all of a sudden it wouldn't stick for nothing. Um, it says, FYI, I had good success with it for the first few prints, and it's still all right, but... It went from way too good adhesion to not even sticking to the back right corner unless I shim the bed. But if I shim the bed, it ends up... Let's see what it says. Ends up... Uh, too... Close. And that's with receipt paper. I'd super appreciate it. I'm... Not totally green, as I mentioned. Uh, I have a few printers, but I've never owned one with the touch, etc., and prefer not knowing the measurements. Two point something shim. Anyway, this person was saying like the same thing. Like it worked great for a minute, and then all of a sudden it didn't work great, and that was kind of my experience. So, um, I don't know if the software just like is you know not properly compensating for the differences in the bed height, you know, throughout the bed, and then the fact that it was actually bent. But, you know, I want to start with a, a fairly, you know, flat print bed surface to, to start with, you know. Um, so, anyway, I've been just kind of reading up on it. And this is exactly what mine kind of looked like after I did a little fiddling. But, I mean, it was bad here and here, which means, you know, it's high in the, the cross angle here you know so i guess this is just a thing with these you know um so hopefully uh the print bed surface has a lot to do with it which i imagine because um every other printer i've used and you know, none of them you know were very consistent with you know adhesion you know the tape works great but sometimes it doesn't want to come off you know, and then you end up ripping pieces of it out, and then you have to replace it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, I think that this printer here is suffering from two problems, and one is the print bed doesn't last for anything at all, because there wouldn't be all these people on Amazon ordering the other print bed saying it's amazing. Um, uh, I just can't believe like I got less than five prints out of it before it was trash, you know. Um, so anyway, I really do like the printer. It prints really fast compared to what I'm used to. Um, and I don't know what happened that the nozzle got too low. I didn't adjust the Z-axis um, I had previously without an issue. And then I went and did a calibration, uh, a bed leveling, and then I went to do a, this print. And when I before I did this print, I set it to calibrate, um, just like you would if you would boot it up and go into print. Oh, it's being rather slow. So if you go into print, let's say I want to print the infinity cube, which turned out awesome. I would go over here, and I would turn on calibration. And that's what it did. It just dug the hell in. I could tell. I see nothing was coming out of the nozzle because it couldn't. This thing, the biggest problem with this does is on the bottom of the nozzle here on this thing is it pancakes out around the bottom of it. It's just dragging this mushroom head of crap. And, you know, I probably have a couple pieces in here that look like that. Um, I don't know where they went. Yeah, just like that. And it's just, you know, dragging that thing around, you know, all across here and, you know. So, um, 
but th this this bed here so like I was saying what we're going to end up doing we'll have to adjust the bed from here when the springs get here and um, the new sheet will have this coating on both sides so that'll be cool uh, I'll still print with this for as long as I can but when the new one shows up here I'm going to try it and see but um it looks like there was stuff in here, but there wasn't. It came to me brand new like that. So, um, this thing is really, really fast. And I, I saw a video where the guy was saying, don't buy the KE. This one will actually print as fast as the KE. You just don't have clipper. Um, honestly, I'm sick and tired of things connected to the internet. I do not want my printer connected to the internet. I think that, without getting into a, a, a rant, too many things in the world are connected to the internet, which makes our infrastructure vulnerable, which makes it easy for big tech companies to sell our information, track our habits, market to us. But the biggest thing that I think that was the biggest mistake, especially for the United States, is that our entire power grid and water and sewer and all that stuff is controlled through the internet in some way, shape, or form, which makes it extremely easy for a hostile country to get in and hack our infrastructure in some way, shape, or form. There's no reason that any of these things need to be connected to the internet because for hundreds of years before the internet, we didn't have the internet. The internet's a fairly new thing when you think about it. It really didn't start to become available until about 1995. And, I mean, it was invented technically way back before that. And the government had its own, like, intranet. You know, they had, like, server-based, you know, computer systems that, you know, were to be at large corporations. But, um... I, we don't need that, and that's stupid. It's all the same thing with like cell phone towers. You have a cell phone tower or amateur radio repeater linked to the internet. You are putting all your eggs in one basket. If you have a amateur radio repeater or a cell phone tower, it should be linked to the nearest repeater using a microwave system or just another type of system. RF to RF. That way, like, no matter what, you're not relying on some fiber optic connection that some idiot can come through and, with a bulldozer and accidentally cut up, or somebody can do it on purpose, which actually happened down in Phoenix, Arizona. Somebody went to one of the sites and, and cut one of the main connections, and it literally wiped out all of northern Arizona. And that included internet and cell phone service. So... You know, it's amazing how vulnerable our infrastructure is. So, keeping with that, I am just kind of try to be, you know, don't want my printer hooked to the internet. I don't want things like Xboxes that need the internet in order to operate, you know, diskless. You know, the, uh, the kids have a Xbox One that literally barely functions without internet. I mean, what happened to the, the days of the old Xbox 360... And the old original Xboxes where, like, you know, you could play the game. You didn't need to download an update. You know, I have some games here. I don't really play games. I like the Assassin's Creed, but, like, when I play video games, I feel like I'm sitting here doing something I'm not supposed to do. I feel like I'm procrastinating and ignoring my duties. So, I prefer to do what I do instead of video games. <laughs> so, anyway. I've been... Uh, sleep deprived, uh, working with these printers and doing research and, you know, reading videos. Um, I have not figured out, um, I think it's Wondering World or whatever on, on here it said, uh, about doing the paper test with this. I have not figured that out. Um, we go in here and cancel this. Um, so... If we go in here and click, I think, prepare, we can go in here. And this, uh, disable the stepper, it doesn't seem to do anything. 
Um, we go into here to the. Uh, I guess it's not in this one. Move. Okay. Um, the control is what it's in the control. Okay. So we can set the temperature. We can set the motion. We can store the configuration. We can read the configuration. We can edit the leveling. Okay. But when I go to edit and I want to change these, this is what it looks like now, by the way. It's pretty good, I guess. Except for, like, negative 0.23, negative 0 0.05, to 0.46, I think is my highest. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm more, like, used to not using the metric. But, um, so let's say we want to edit something. We want to edit this one. Well, how are we going to edit it? It doesn't, like, move into position to over here. It doesn't go, oh, okay. So, um, I don't have a way to, like, check the bed level. I can force this, you know, over. It'll move. But it, the motor is actually spinning when I do that. Um, and I can make it go up and down, you know. But, um, so anyway, oops, I don't know what the hell that was. So what I'm going to do is, just, since I changed it and I don't remember what it was, I'll just shut it off. And it should not save anything. I don't want to change it. But I don't know how to get this thing in here to, to measure it. Which would be nice because when I get my springs, I'm going to have to do that. Um, and without being able to measure it, then the only way I can test it is to test a print and see if my changes help. And that could take a really long time to do. This is what I don't like about this printer. I just want to be able to put it in the corners here in the different spots. Just four of them. Let me adjust this one, this one, this one, this one and see. And then check the middle to see where the middle is at. That's all I want to do. If you go into the leveling menu, it's going to start to level. It won't let you do anything else. Um, I don't know if you push this. It starts doing some homing thing. Okay. Let's just see what it does. And then the other problem is I have this filament sticking out of the end. I don't know what it's doing. I really don't care for this CR touch crap. Like, I really don't. So, I, I don't know if Let's see. Well, what am I supposed to be doing here? Okay. So, that's all it does? Okay. And now once it's done that, okay. So, we, we're in the menu where we can move X and move Y. And... Uh, these are the numbers that of the position I think it's in right now. Um, so we go up point one or down point one. Yeah, I'm not interested in doing that really. I don't know what this does. Auto home. I haven't tried that, so I don't know what it does. But I don't see a way to get into here and, um, calibrate it manually not that I'm aware of so then it just stops right there like that so you know I mean I don't know um,
I, I have no idea. I, I really don't. I'm not going to hit the level button because um, I don't, I don't want to fiddle with it anymore. It takes so damn long when you do that. So, if you have an idea, you know how I can move it to put my paper underneath it and check it. Because what I want to do is be able to put my paper underneath it, check it, and then see the numbers here. Um, and I, I guess you should be able to... What well, It seems like you should be able to go in here and... Uh, or is it maybe under read configuration? I don't know, but it seems like it doesn't do anything. Oh, I need to see what version I'm running on here. See, this is the 1.0.4, so the, there's supposed to be a 0.6 that's out there. That's supposed to solve a bunch of problems, but... Uh, I, I guess it's not available, or you can't download it. So we can edit the leveling data. We can store the configuration. But it doesn't do anything that I'm aware of. It doesn't seem to. This is really interesting that this thing has a max speed of 500. Don't you guys find that kind of interesting? That this looks like a KE. Interesting. So, these are the E steps, I guess. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know anymore. But I know that once I do get my parts, I will be able to adjust the leveling of the bed and go in and scan it, see what the numbers are, keep fiddling with it till it looks good. Um, and what I'll do first is I'll put my new print bed on before I do anything um, to see... If I can get it to work like that too. If I don't need to change these out, I won't. 